about a mile away from the house. It didn't matter if it's snowing, didn't matter. I'd have big boots on, and then Dad would have me strap on leg weights, and I would run behind the truck almost all the way home. Now, had I done something wrong that day? No. Was he mad at me? No. The fact is, I was weak. And if I was ever going to get stronger, I was going to have to experience some greater resistance. I was going to have to pass through times of discipline. And what you need to see is that discipline doesn't always come as the result of some sin in your life. Discipline is necessary in order to make you into the man or woman of God that God intends. Do you see that? Discipline can also be seen as, as training. As training. And that is very, very important to understand. It's not always as a result of some rebellion in your life. Okay? That's been very, very helpful for me. But discipline also can be as a result of, of something that, that's gone unnoticed in our life. That is sin. Let, let me give you an example from, from my own life. I was preaching in a conference with men that I greatly respect. Greatly respect. And um, this happened just, I guess, a month and a half, two months ago. I knew I was invited there because the other speaker fell out, couldn't do it. It was something that was quickly just put before me, and um, I shouldn't have done it. I, I'm very tired. I'm wore out. But I went ahead and did it. I got up. I started preaching. There was very little of God in everything I was doing. I made a statement, a foolish statement, about John Owen. I just said, you know, some of you guys reading 30,000 pages of John Owen need to be reading your Bible. Well, there's no contradiction between John Owen and the Scriptures. And, and the way I said it, it just wasn't appropriate. Well, later on, that same evening, a guy got up and just basically rebuked me from the pulpit. Now, here's the point. A friend of mine got kind of angry because he said, look, he just rebuked you publicly. He didn't even come to you. But here's the thing. I knew what was going on. Regardless of what was done, I knew what was going on. It was the Lord. I was embarrassed because th these are men I greatly respect. But it was from the Lord. I I'm not going to get angry. You know, when, when someone comes to you with a rebuke, and the only thing you can say is, well, it may have been right, but you didn't say it right. you got some serious problems. And it was like, and it's where, actually, it embarrassed me. And then later on, I got a letter that pointed out other things that I had said that really hurt me. And the reason why it hurt me is some of them were true. But a month and a half ago is when I realized, and then talking to the pastor here this, this week, but about a month and a half ago is when I realized, hold it, God has really used me in the last couple of years. I'm getting dangerously close to burning out. I'm redlining. And through what that fellow said, he, he may be saving my life. And then I came here and the pastor has been encouraging me, Paul, come on, you've got, you got to get back. Scripture, rest, settle down. Do you see what's going on? That this is the Lord. This is the Lord. So I, I was blindsided. I was blind to the fact that I'm running on fumes. You see that? And then God allowed that to happen. Now I could get mad all day. Why did He get up and pulpit in front of all those people and say that? And He's a very godly man. I just have to say, I think the Lord was in the whole thing. Because it's saving my life. And then I come here this week, it's the same thing. A very godly, wise, and much older man than me, I'm just kidding, <laughs> is sitting down and telling me many of the similar things that have been going through my heart and other people have been addressing. Now, that is a form of discipline. Now, another form of discipline. I hurt right now. My lower back hurts. And, and I've got such pain in my head right now, literally, I just want to run out of this room screaming. Now, 
I have a, a bone problem. I have all these. I got more metal in me than a Tonka truck. All right. Why? I guess the charismatics would say I'm in sin. I bless. I bless it. What has God saved me from? What has God saved me from? It's not necessarily Paul's this great sinner and God's doing something to get back at him. It, it's simply this. God knows exactly what you and I need to be conformed to the image of His Son. He knows exactly what we need. All of these wins, all these problems, all these different things, he know, all these difficult people He brings into our lives, everything. He knows what we need to be conformed to the image of Christ. And that's a big part of, of discipline. Now, let's talk for a moment about sins that it's very difficult to get victory over. Uh, all of you know this. I mean, it happened in your own life. You know, the moment that I was saved, literally, there were certain things in my life that were horrible things that I did as an unbeliever that the moment I got saved, they just stopped. I mean, bam! They were gone. But there were other things that did not go. Now, why? Why? Ever thought about that? Why? I mean, why just not why just not immediate sanctification? Well, let me just ask you a question. I don't know, you're probably not as, as uh, immature as me, but let me just give you a story from my daily life. One morning I get up, man, I'm I get up at four in the morning. Me and Jonathan Edwards, we're there, we're studying, you know. I'm praying and uh just everything, you know. Then it's 8 o'clock and I come down. I got the Bible. And I'm just helping my wife, man, with Scripture. And I just look like a Puritan. I'm doing everything right today. Now, for the last 10 years, I haven't done any of this. But I'm, today, man, I have got it down. I have, I'm just looking good. I go to work. I'm blessing everybody. And I'm, I witness to the guy at lunch. And I mean, I go to bed at night and I'm thinking, why can't everybody get this right? I mean, what's wrong with everybody else? I mean, today was a good day. I get one good day under my belt, and automatically I'm almost thinking, man, I am really, I'm doing it. God leaves in His own providence these things in our lives, doesn't deal with them immediately as He does some other things. Because He is creating in us a dependence, an ever-growing, ever-deepening dependence upon Him and upon grace, it also helps us to understand the nature of salvation, that our standing before God is not based on our performance, but His finished work in Christ. Now, let's not take the hyper view on this and say, well, you know, it's just God's will that I be ungodly in these areas. No, that's not true either. Because He promises, a great promise, that Charles Leiter pointed out to me years ago, it's been very helpful, where He says in Ezekiel, I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. That means that even many of the sins that I still struggle with, that I have to be really areas in my life where I really have to be careful that God is going to eventually also work in those areas and bring about greater and greater victory. I'll give you an example. One, probably the, the greatest dragon that I deal with is, is depression. It is a great dragon for me. There were times in my younger Christian life that it just incapacitated me. And there are times in my Christian life up till today that I will still struggle. But as I look over the 25 years, I see, I see great victories that the Lord has won in my life. Part of it can only be attributed to a supernatural working. Other parts of it is attributed to practical means that the providence of God uses, like giving me a very wise wife. So you see, those are the ways that, that discipline will work. How much did we finish? All right. Oh, okay. I'm finished. Oh, okay. just really cool. What's the... Very 
very quick. The love of God. The love of God. With the justice of God. Because that's when you begin to, to realize the importance of the cross, the necessity of the cross. How can God save a people, a wicked people, and still be just? How can He manifest that love? And that, that is done through the cross of Jesus Christ. The, the hardest thing you're ever going to have to do as a Christian is this. Look into the mirror of God's Word and see your failure and then believe that God loves you as much as He says He does.